Hello Game Crafters and welcome to our first update video. Alongside the patch notes we want to publish these videos to help explain the updates in a video form, as some people may find that easier to understand. To start off this update, I want to draw your attention to the main menu screen. You can see we've added a new button to this screen for the tutorials. The tutorials used to be in the prefab workshop, but they are a little hidden to new users, so to help make them more visible we put them in their own separate location. As you can see here, there are 7 tutorials to help guide you on your journey to crafting games, and there will be more added in future, so keep your eyes on this tutorial tab for helpful tips and tricks. Now, let's dive into this update some more. Firstly, we've added some more powerful physics blocks to the game. We have the advanced movement dampener, the advanced rotation dampener, the movement constrainer and the rotation constrainer. The advanced movement and rotation dampeners allow you to choose which axis they will dampen. This is different to the current movement and rotation dampeners where they dampen in all axes. The constrainers are very powerful blocks. They can stop the movement in any axis of that block. If I was to place this block, the movement constraint in the air, and disable the green axis, which is the up and down axis, you'll notice it doesn't fall to the ground. However, if I was to bump into it, it still moves in the other two axes. If I was to add a cube onto the side of this, you'll notice it can still rotate as well. And it can rotate in all three axes. Now, what if you want to stop that rotation? Well, you add a rotation constraint. If I have to disable the red axes, it no longer falls down. And if I bump into it, it can still rotate along the other two axes. The final block to cover is the game over block. This block allows you to show a HUD element to the user that ends the current game, giving them the option of replaying or quitting the game. They also have buttons for liking and favoriting as well as a link to the Steam Workshop so they can leave comments. You can edit the title, main body and sound effect of this HUD so you can create your own custom win and lose screens. For example, if I was to enter simulation and press this button, you can see the same game screen appears alongside the sound effect. Now, why don't we use these blocks to create a fun game called Hole in the Cube. The goal of this game is to make it through the holes without falling off. So, let's start by creating a start platform. Let's go 10 by 15 for our start platform. And let's give it a nice bold colour. I'm going to go with blue. Now obviously the goal is to stay on this platform, so we need to detect if the user has fallen off. So, let's grab a character on enter trigger and put a boundary around the box that sort of covers the whole area. And we want to display a game over screen when they hit this. So, we'll grab our game over block, place it to the side, and we're going to hook that, hook that up to the trigger that we have just placed. I place that correctly? Yes, I did. So, if we now enter simulation and pull off, you can see the game over screen is working just fine. So, let's go back and input the text we want to display for when the user has won. Or, not won, lost, because they've fallen off. So, we'll type you lose in the header and we'll type you fell off the. Platform. And we'll choose a nice sound effect to go alongside it because a win 8 bit sound doesn't really sound like losing. So let's go to the lose, trombo lose trombone to really ring home the fact that you have lost. So let's test these changes. And as you can see, that works perfectly well. So Next thing we're going to need is obstacles. So let's build out from this platform a couple of bits, say 50, and we'll create a wall segment. Let's go 6, 4, and then 4. 
Oh, again. Oh, no, that should be six. And that's our obstacle. But they can't do much right now. Past the end of simulation, it's going to fall to the ground. So we need to make it move towards us, the character, or the player. So, let's put a mover block on. And that will move towards the character. So, if we enter simulation, see, it moves forward, but it's rotating over and falling to the ground. So, let's stop that by putting a rotation constraint on and disable all of the axes because we don't want it to rotate in any of the axes. But before we enter simulation and test it, we're going to have to put a movement constraint on as well because, as you noticed, it falls to the ground too. So, let's stick a movement constrainer on and disable the red axes in this case, because that's our up and down axes. Enter simulation, and voila! Oh. So as we can see, this platform is, this obstacle is built too tall, so we'll just make that smaller. However, the functionality is working perfectly. It comes towards you and it doesn't rotate or fall. But it's moving quite fast. So let's slow it down in our mover. Let's say five. And let's give that a try. So let's go back to our platform, and then to simulation, and ah, there's not enough force. So we need to fix that. Go into our mover, up the force to max, so the user cannot push it against it, and let's try that again. Nope, go straight on. That's exactly what we want. So, we want this to be a game. So we need to create a score. Let us create the character on trigger. Cover the area that the character is going to go through. And let's add a timer. We'll move this over to the side alongside the rest of our game elements. And we're going to hook up the increment to the trigger we have just placed. So, when the character enters this trigger, this is going to count up. Now, we want a target number of three, as we're going to have three obstacles. And after you go through those three obstacles, we want to display a game over screen. So, let's hook this game over screen that we've just placed now to target reach. And let's give it the text that we want to display. So, you win. You made it through all the obstacles. And let's change the sound effect to win applause. However, we only have one obstacle, so we need to select our hand, box select our obstacle, press Ctrl C to copy it, and now we can go back a bit and place it two more times. Go to a start platform. We can now play it as a user. And you can see, after making it through all three platforms, you win. And it is that easy and that quick to make games in GameCraft. These new blocks have opened up such a wide range of possibilities, and it's super easy to make games. And I look forward to seeing what games you create. Thank you so much for watching, if you haven't subscribed already make sure you do, and if you want notifications hit that bell icon. Again thank you for watching and we will see you next time.